Hey, so in November of 2023, I wrote a piece for Racket, a local publication here in the Twin Cities called For Artists and Musicians Who Want to Speak Out About Palestine But Aren't Sure How. Um, not because I'm an expert or have all the answers, just sharing some tips and tools that I've learned related to social media, advocacy, narrative change, etc. The conversation, I think, about art and activism almost always focuses on the art itself and like the magical power that we have to persuade people. And yeah, songs and poems are great, but this isn't a song or a poem. Uh, the piece I wrote is something much more down to earth, trying to share some really concrete and actionable things, like the stuff that people can use, whether or not you think of yourself as a political artist or whatever. Um, and simply because all of that is still relevant, I figured I'd share a video version, uh, maybe update a couple of points. So it starts with a question that I got from a musician friend, uh, which was, I have a platform and I want to speak out about what's happening in Gaza, but I honestly just don't know much about the issue. I don't know where to start. I'm, I'm worried that I'll say the wrong thing. And I think, <clears throat> you know, that kind of worry is valid and understandable. But, you know, as the person points out, it is easy to let those worries lead us to silence. Uh, just a complete kind of head in the sand. I'm just going to do my thing over here and make my art and not be political. And of course, that's a trap. Like whether we like it or not, not being political is a political stance. Um, I think another trap is trying to acknowledge what's happening without actually saying anything of substance. Like it's the kind of, you know, all lives matter style, thoughts and prayers style statements. Like I believe all life is precious and all people deserve to live, which on one hand, like isn't wrong. I agree with that 100%. But statements like that are easy to agree with because they ask nothing of us. And that isn't to say that we shouldn't mourn the innocent on all sides and acknowledge everyone's humanity. But in moments like this, the most meaningful way to acknowledge everyone's humanity and to honor everyone's humanity is to end the war. And of course, ceasefire is a short term demand. Um, but we can affirm the short term demand matters. Uh, it's a life or death issue for thousands and thousands of people. Um, we can acknowledge that the Hamas attacks on October 7th that killed over a thousand people were horrific. We must also acknowledge that the Israeli government's ongoing U.S. supported happening literally right now response to those attacks is horrific. It's collective punishment. It's ethnic cleansing, very much aligned with the broader goals of the most right wing members of the Israeli government. Uh, wh when I wrote this piece in November, I quoted the Associated Press reporting 9,000 Palestinians killed, more than 3,600 of them children. Three months later now, I'm recording this in February, um, the United Nations says more than 100,000 Palestinians have been killed, wounded, or are missing in Gaza. Every international aid organization and human rights NGO from Doctors Without Borders to Amnesty Inter International to everyone is affirming the need for a ceasefire. The activist organizations representing Palestinian people, Jewish people, people of all faiths and backgrounds, even radical organizations who affirm that ceasefire is an incomplete demand are still on the same page saying we need a ceasefire to save lives right now to be the foundation for any other kind of movement. And so for artists... Speaking out can be scary, but I mention all of that to say that, you know, you are not alone. This is a movement that is so much bigger than us. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But one point I want to make here is that because the ceasefire demand is short term and specific, it's something that artists and musicians and influencers and anyone with any kind of platform or access to an audience can meaningfully contribute to. And that leads to the, to the first point in the piece, um, which is let's get out of our own heads about looking performative, right? Performative in, in scare quotes. So we, we all know that our social media posts aren't going to save the world. We know that there are other ways to plug into the work beyond posting, and, and we'll talk about that. But as artists, we have access to audiences that may not already be tuned into world events, and that by itself is a valuable thing, if only as a first step, if only as a small contribution. Palestinians and groups connected to Palestinians are asking people around the world to not look away to tell the story of what is happening, to lift up the voices of those in harm's way. And yes, posting is the least we can do, but that should be a reason to do it, not the opposite. The second point, we don't need to write super in-depth notes at manifestos and share those. We can signal boost the people doing the work. 
Um, this is maybe the most important tip in, in this whole piece. If you ever feel the tension between, on one hand, you're not an expert, so keep your mouth shut, versus on the other hand, you must personally speak out and have a statement about every bad thing happening in the world. Remember, those aren't the only two options. Um, it is possible to decenter ourselves while still using our platforms. The, the term, you know, that I found to be useful there is signal boosting. We can share, we can repost, we can amplify the calls to action from groups like U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights or Jewish Voice for Peace or dissenters or M Muslims for Just Futures or Palestinian Feminist Collective or, or local groups doing the work in, in the city that you're in. Um, a really quick side point here is I think signal boosting activist groups is really important because while, you know, raising awareness and sharing news, information, updates about just what is happening is absolutely part of, of our role here. If all we ever do is say, look at that terrible thing over there, um, that can actually demobilize our audiences. So lifting up the specific calls to action coming from organizations is a way to mobilize people instead. There are toolkits out there for like contacting your reps, information about upcoming rallies and marches, success stories from more militant actions. Like these kinds of things are, are vital. Um, second point here around signal boosting is that we can signal boost the reporting, um, especially reporting from on the ground in Gaza, commentary from actual Palestinians, primary sources. Um, there are many examples of individuals doing this work. I'd also point out um, one I haven't seen a, a ton of people sharing, but I found really, really good is um, 972 Magazine, 972 Magazine. And of course, with this point, we have to be really careful about misinformation and disinformation. That's probably a whole other video, but in a very general sense, I try to lean towards sharing journalists and scholars and activists with documented histories of doing the work rather than, for example, a TikTok response to an Instagram post of a screenshotted tweet from some random person on the internet. I know that isn't always easy to navigate, um, but that relates to the next point. Another resource I think is really useful to kind of anchor how we do this signal boosting is the solidarity statements from trusted organizations. Like as an artist, you, you might not know a lot about Palestine. Your audience may or may not know a lot about it, but maybe they're familiar with like the Movement for Black Lives here in the U.S. or the Transgender Law Center or the Dream Defenders or NDN Collective or all these other groups who have released really good statements. I think those can be good doorways into learning more about the issue and how that issue is connected to a whole range of domestic issues. Um, we could also share like the ceasefire resolutions that different cities have adopted, including Minneapolis, just as I record this. Um, that list goes on. But again, the, the big takeaway when we talk about speaking out, I think there's so often this assumption that every individual has to be an expert on every topic. When it's like there are already a bunch of incredible people speaking out right now. We can use our platforms to help amplify their voices. Um, you know, this video obviously is not an example of that, but I think the, the larger point stands. It's an easy reframe um, to what, you know, just something we can do to make a difference, especially if we do it consistently. A uh, really personal example, not to lift, again, not to lift myself up as any kind of brilliant expert or anything, but a really basic thing that I've done is on Instagram, every third post is a uh, recommended reading someone else's voice, bringing it into the space. So that way I can still use my account to like promote my upcoming projects or whatever, but there's a consistent way that I'm lifting up other people's voices too. That's an, I, you know, copy that idea. I love, I, it's been a really good thing for me. Anyways, um, the third point in the piece is to make local connections. Um, every world issue has local ripple effects, and that can be a key factor in bringing more people into the work. As artists who live in the community, we can signal boost, you know, I'm in Minneapolis, right? And so the, the local groups I might signal boost could be like the Minnesota chapter of American Muslims for Palestine or the Twin Cities chapter of Jewish Voice for Peace or MISNA or the University of Minnesota Students for Justice in Palestine group or, you know, Take Action Minnesota have this like contact your representatives web form. You can share that, you know, and wherever you live, whether it's here or somewhere else, like a little research should turn up some kind of local, if not in your specific town, like in your state, maybe some kind of work that's being done that we can support. Um, you know, pretty much everything I've said so far is something that we can do whether or not we're artists, but I do think a specific artist musician thing is that in our own scenes, we can interrupt um, well, let me say like this. In the piece, I shared a link to a solidarity statement from Rampant's magazine talking about the importance of um, the, what the words that they use are interrupting 
anti-Palestinian, anti-Islamic, and anti-Arab violence, as well as the existence of an increase in anti-Semitic violence and hate. Both of which, you know, unquote, both of which our audiences might encounter at venues and social media comments or elsewhere. Like, if you say free Palestine and someone shouts, no, they're all terrorists, like, we have to shut that down. And on the same token, if you say free Palestine and someone's like, yeah, because the Jews control the media, like, we have to shut that down too. Again, just a very down to earth local manifestation of like a bigger thing that's happening. Um, the fourth point, we can take signal boosting offline too. Speaking out isn't just about posting on social media. I know artists who have turned their merch tables into information tables, offered their sound system expertise to rally organizers, raised money for local organizing efforts, or given up, you know, if you have a 45 minute set at a club, give up a minute or two minutes so an activist can promote an upcoming action. Um, as artists, we have more to offer in times of crisis than our art. Uh, very small example, um, but any performance of mine recently, I've had these zines that, that I've designed. Um, it's just sharing a bunch of quotes and recommended readings about what's going on, um, just as a way to share information. Again, offline. It's signal boosting, but it's not on social media, or it's a very low-tech form of social media. Um, and I think we can be creative and find more ways to do offline stuff like that. Uh, and maybe it goes without saying, but a related point here is that we can join movements as artists, but we can also join movements just as, like, people. That sometimes the most powerful thing I can do is not to write a poem, but it's to show up in other ways. I, I think you all probably know that, but it's worth saying. And then the last point, I know this is a longer video, but the last point in the piece was that we can understand the risks while also acknowledging the possibilities. Um, I can't tell anyone out there like what you must say or do or, or judge anyone for how they use their platforms especially in a climate in which artists have been like disinvited from gigs for speaking out and others are dealing with trolls or critiques or just the stress of like having to field questions when you, you yourself might still be learning. Like that can be scary. And I think that scariness doesn't outweigh the importance of this moment. It doesn't outweigh what we are being called to do in this moment. I think reframing the call to speak out from a responsibility to an opportunity has been useful to me. Um, in this historical moment, we have an opportunity to make a difference, to use the privilege that we have as people with some kind of platform um, to encourage our audiences to get involved in the struggle for peace and justice, right? And platform, you know, I'm not super famous. You listening to this might not be super famous, but in this day and age, like, we all have some kind of platform. And I think, you know, no one artist, whether you're super famous or not super famous, no one artist needs to be or should be or can be the voice, like speaking for everyone. But we can all be voices. We can all contribute to this thing that is bigger than us. Um, you know, and the last point is, you know, because the point of protest for me, of speaking out, of bearing witness and trying to find ways to cultivate solidarity it, it, it's a both and, right? It, in that there are specific short-term policy demands that aren't ever going to be won if we're not making noise and organizing and pushing for them. And there's also the longer-term work of narrative shifting, of political education, of affirming that people have power when we work together and, and bringing more people into the movement. And artists have, have always had a role to play in that work. So... Thanks for listening. I hope this can be useful. Um, check out the piece for all the like the specific links and stuff like that.